before me I have a photograph that I took a few years ago whilst on the island of Tobago and it was just a casual photograph at the time taken on my old Sony H1 and when I got home I realised there were a few things I could do to make the photograph more pleasing to the eye. So first of all we've got quite a bright background and quite a dark subject and that's the wrong way around of course because we want the focus of the photograph to be on the owl in the foreground not this solid white wall. So we need to do a bit of work A lightening up the owl and B tempering down the brightness of the wall in the background. So what we want to do is rein in the highlights and lighten up the shadows and thankfully here inside of Photoshop Elements we have a really great command for doing either both of those things or any one of them and that command is called Shadow Highlights. To access it we need to come up here to the Enhance menu where we'll find the majority of our enhancement commands and come down then to the Adjust Lighting submenu and we're going to click on the Shadow Highlights command like so. Now as soon as the dialog box appears you'll be able to see a shift in the image itself of the lighting values and that's because by default this lighten shadows option is set to 25 percent so go ahead just for a moment and reduce that back down to zero okay now the sliders are all self-explanatory so we can lighten up the shadows in the image by increasing this slider we can darken up the highlights by adjusting this one and then if we decide that we have an imbalance between shadows and highlights because of those two sliders we can then correct the problem by adjusting the contrast slider at the bottom. So let's make sure the dialog box is out of the way and then look towards improving this photograph. So let's start by lightening the shadows and even though this option has a percentage value associated with it, I'm not really going to find any benefit to it when fixing the image. Instead it's going to be easier to find what we're looking for by just moving the slider and visually measuring our success on screen. So I'll move that up to something like 30% which gives us a load of lightening but doesn't go too far. Notice if I add more than that we start flattening out the colours and also bringing out undesirable defects contained in the image such as noise and banding which both amount to random variations of pixels caused by the camera and shooting conditions when taking the image. Incidentally we're going to be looking at ways of reducing both of those problems if you should see them in your image in the final chapter of this series so check out that one when it comes around. So getting back to this project, even though there's a temptation of adding loads and loads of lightening, especially when we see the amazing results we're getting, it's always good to be mindful that if we add too much, we can very quickly shift this image from a good photo to an ugly one. Anyhow, a value of 30 is going to be great for our purposes. Now the owl is looking good, and I want to take a little bit of emphasis out of the wall in the background which at the moment remains our predominant highlight. So let's increase the shadows by moving this slider along and I'd say something along the lines of 15 is good for this image. We're not going to remove it completely but we can take the sting out of it by just leveling it off a touch like we've done. Again there's no magic values and every image will be different so this just gives you a sense of how these sliders work. So at this point we have a fairly good looking image it's certainly looking much better than what it did when we started out but we've got to remember that we've essentially darkened the highlights and brightened the shadows and as a result we've reduced the level of contrast so if we wanted to compensate for that we could just adjust this mid-tone contrast slider so I'm going to nudge it up just a touch maybe we'll go for a value around 10% something around this figure looks fairly good if we look at the image and compare what we're getting in our results and if we go too far in either direction with this option we can start to very quickly undo the good work that we've already done so make sure that we use the control sparingly again just small adjustments are usually the best way to go okay I'm going to see how this image looked before because I'm quite pleased with what we've managed to do here so 
I'm going to turn off the preview to see the image when we brought it in and then I'm going to turn the preview back on to see how the image looks with the adjustments we're proposing inside this dialog box and I'm quite happy with where we're going there. I'll click OK to confirm the change and we've now made a really great contribution to the image with just this one command definitely a technique worthy of inclusion inside your Photoshop Elements bag of tricks and something that you will use quite regularly especially if you take most of your photos on the automatic settings of your camera. Mm -hmm.